Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Davina Shea and today we are taking a look at what some would consider to be the real Little Italy. They call it The Hill and it's located in St. Louis, Missouri. My family visited for the first time a while back to get a taste of some authentic Italian food and let me tell you, it did not disappoint in the slightest. The restaurant we chose to try out, which is the one that we're currently walking to here, it was actually packed and we had to park quite a ways away in order to find parking because all they had was street parking. But anyway, so the restaurant we chose to try out was called Zia on the Hill. A little history on the hill itself. So between the 1880s and about 1924, Italian immigrants pretty much laid claim to what is called now the hill. The neighborhood eventually became like totally self-supporting. You had work, shopping, church, school, like all within their community in their neighborhood. The name came from it uh, being located near the highest point of the city. Today, the area is still three quarters Italian American. Here's a picture of the restaurant on the outside. I wanted to make sure to take a picture so that I knew you guys would get a good look at the place. But I thought the place looked really cute. Um, I already a huge fan of St. Louis architecture. I love all the different kinds of houses that you can find there. Like I'll probably do a different video on that some other day. But yeah, so I really like the look of the restaurant. Very cozy. The staff was really nice. And I feel like even though they were really busy at the time that we went in, I really don't feel like we waited that long for food. Smile. Another fun fact about the hill is that it is actually the origin of the toasted ravioli. There is debate though actually as to which restaurant invented it. I think there's like two different ones that argue that they were the creators. I'm not gonna say which one it was because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I took pictures of our food as well so you guys could get an idea of what the serving size was like. I definitely feel like the price was well aligned with how much food that they gave you. Um, I think my plate was actually the most expensive coming in at like $19 I think. But everything was so, so good. What do you think? Most fantabulous Italian food I've ever had. Mm. Amazing. That's great. It was so good. Good. Amazing. Yeah, good. It's so good. Thank you for the recommendation. Thank you. Very satisfied customer. Now we're going to go ahead and do a walkthrough of the rest of the restaurant, but I just definitely want to say that I absolutely loved the food. I loved the service. Um, 10 out of 10 would recommend checking it out if you're ever in the area. I definitely want to go back again sometime soon because I would like to try some of the other restaurants that are in the area as well. Now for some history on the restaurant itself. So the restaurant was founded in 1985 by Inch Shodini. Um, I don't actually know his real first name. I only found his nickname, Inch. But anyway, um, by him and his younger brother, Dennis, with the support of their aunts and an uncle, which is how it actually got its name, Zia, which is actually Italian for aunt. Unfortunately, Inch actually passed away in 2015 at 72. I don't actually know what the cause of death was. But as far as I know, it continues to be a family-owned business. In 2000, the city of St. Louis declared Zia's an official landmark. In 2009, unfortunately, there was a fire that gutted the whole building, and they didn't actually reopen until 2010. They actually held a firefighter's appreciation dinner opening night. So, unfortunately, what the place originally looked like when it opened is long gone, but I think they did a really good job at keeping the character of the place in the remodel. 
And uh, in 2013, they actually added solar panels to the building to try to be more sustainable. So you have good food and conscious about the environment. I mean, what more do you need? <laughs> but anyway, back to the history of the overall hill. Um, like I said, it's still three quarters Italian American, and that's because homes in this area rarely get listed on the open market. Um, today, it's mostly well known for the Italian-owned businesses like the restaurants like Zia's, bakeries, grocery stores, salons, etc. There's also a lot of famous people that came from the hill. You may have noticed some baseball memorabilia around the restaurant here, and that's because baseball greats like Yogi Berra and uh, Joe Gariagola, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, uh, they grew up there. They actually, those two actually grew up across the street from each other. And four of the players on the U.S. soccer team that played in the 1950 FIFA World Cup actually came from there, too. Uh, they even made a movie about the team called The Game of Their Lives, in which, you know, against all odds, they actually beat England 1-0. to zero. And uh, those guys were Frankie Pee Wee Wallace, Gino Periani, Frank Borghi, and Charlie Colombo. And I didn't get a chance to go out and show you guys their actual homes, which are very close by to this area. But um, it was just, it was really cold. <laughs> and so I didn't want to get out and walk around. But next time I go, I will definitely um, show you guys some more and maybe get some footage of those houses and you guys can see where everybody grew up. But yeah, there's just a lot of cool history behind this place. And I don't know if you just noticed, but there was that little mini arch if you've heard of st louis arch <laughs> they had a mini one out in front of that restaurant i'll try to figure out for next time too which one of the restaurants was the one that invented the toasted ravioli so i can uh, let you guys know how good that is <laughs> but yeah so just to kind of finish off the video just uh we decided to kind of drive around the area just to kind of show you guys a little bit more um you'll notice that they actually their fire hydrants are painted <laughs> red white and green for their flag which I thought was kind of cool too uh, but yeah and the last thing of note here um, you'll see I'm pretty sure you'll see one of the I think it's pronounced Boche gardens also in the video and then you'll see St. Ambrose Church as well and that has the Italian immigrant statue next to it but thank you guys so much for watching this video today I hope you enjoyed it please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Oh, wait, sorry. There it is. St. Ambrose Church. <laughs> and um, right there is the immigrant statue. Okay, now I'm done. Mm -hmm.